Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from across the world. Our headlines The European Union passes a COVID 19 recovery plan of 750 billion euros, but with a catch. Thousands of workers across the United States participate in strike for black lives. The Egyptian parliament sanctions the deployment of troops in Libya to aid Khalifa Haftar's forces. Bolivia's coup installed ruling party seeks to disqualify the MAS presidential candidate. We begin with an update on the COVID 19 situation. The number of infections has reached over 14.3 million, with close to 604,000 fatalities as of today afternoon. The number of cases added yesterday globally was over 220,000. Meanwhile, the European Union has finally agreed upon a 750 billion euro recovery package for the 27 member country bloc after a marathon round of discussion that went on for nearly five days in Brussels. The 27 leaders agreed upon a common budget of 1.1 trillion euros for the period of 2021 to 27, which includes a relief package. The dominant group of fiscal conservative leadership from the north of Europe opposed the earlier relief proposal which had 550 billion of the 750 billion as a free grant. Their threat to kill the proposal eventually led to a major reduction in the number of uh, amount of free grants, 390 billion euros. The rest will be repayable soft loans. The northern countries also acquired provisions for a strict implementation of reforms for members receiving grants and loans. Nations that fail to do so can have the flow of funds halted for three months and have their economic policies reviewed by the members. Several Eastern and Mediterranean members who are currently the worst affected were not happy with the plan but compromised to make these funds available. On Monday, thousands of workers across the US participated in a countrywide strike in solidarity with the George Floyd protests. The countrywide strike, called the Strike for Black Lives, was organized by over 60 trade unions and social movements. Participants prominently included workers from essential sectors, including those in the education, gig economy, delivery services, and fast food chains. The strike, which was called early this month, had mass demonstrations by workers in many cities. Many who could not participate in the strike either walked out, held a moment of silence or took the knee for, at their workplaces for 8 minutes and 46 seconds. This, this was part of the 8.46 pledge, which marks the exact span of time for which police officer Derek Chauvin had his knee on George Floyd's neck. The organizers put forth four major demands as part of the strike. These were justice for black communities, for elected officials to act from their position to work towards justice, for corporates to act against racism and economic exploitation, and for the right to unionize for all workers. The organizers also elaborated on long-standing demands like universal health care, a minimum wage of $15 per hour, PPE kits for all essential workers, and a greater amount of investment on black communities. In our next story on Monday, the Egyptian parliament unanimously passed a resolution to sanction troop deployment outside the country. Monday's vote will give the President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi the power to intervene in Libya and act on his threat issued last month. Al-Sisi had warned that if the Turkish-backed government of National Accord of GNA tried to attack the city of Sirte in Libya, Egypt would see it as an attack on its national interests. Sirte is under the control of the Khalifa Haftar-led Libyan National Army or LNA. The GNA forces have been able to end LNA's 18-month blockade of its capital Tripoli and win back a large part of the territory in April. It now wants to regain control over Sirte, which is 450 kilometers east of the capital. The city is considered crucial to reach the oil-producing regions that are currently under Haftar's control. Khalifa Haftar, who is supported by Egypt and other military powers in the region, is also backed by the Libyan parliament based in the city of Tobruk. The Turkish intervention and the Egyptian reaction has created the possibility of a civil war turning into a regional war. The war in oil-rich Libya, and as a result of the regime change efforts and 2011 NATO-led invasion, is fueled largely by competing foreign interests despite a UN arms embargo in place. In our next story, Bolivia's coup installed government led by the far-right Juntos party filed a lawsuit in the Supreme Electoral Court, or the TSE, to disqualify the MAS presidential candidate Luis Arce. The lawsuit filed on Monday seeks to bar Arce from the upcoming general election scheduled to be held in September. The MAS is the party of former Bolivian president Evo Morales who was overthrown in a coup in 2019. The ruling party claimed that Luis Arce released opinion polls on the presidential race which would be in violation of the rules. However, Arce and the MAS have denied the charges pointing out that he only made a passing mention that he is ahead in the race in recent surveys. They pointed out that he neither conducted nor released these polls himself. The MAS of the Movement Towards Socialism Party denounced what they called attempts to pressurize the TSE to disqualify the party. According to the release opinion polls on voting intentions released in July 7th, Luis Arce is poised to win the elections in the first round itself with 41.9% of the votes and a lead of over 15% over his nearest rival. The opinion poll places Carlos Mesa of the centre-right Citizen Community Coalition in the second position with 26.8% of the votes. Meanwhile, the coup installed president and Juntos candidate Johnny Nanez is placed at a distant third with 13.3% of the votes. 
That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with major news developments from the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.